take a look at dynamic forms. Dynamic forms are composed of active form flows. These are flows created in the form rules section of the form properties, which allow us to manipulate what is shown on the actual form. These are broken down into a few different other components, such as data flows, which change the information displayed on the form component, visibility rules, which hide, show, or enable, disable controls on the form, validation rules, which can validate input data on the form. They can either warn or prevent a user from continuing, and then outcome rules. These, these rules that exit the form based on a defined rule criteria. Active form flows are triggered by form components. For example, data change. If a value is changed or updated on a component. Event buttons. If a button on a form uh, that a user will utilize and click. And then there is enter exit when a user clicks into or off of a component. These user, the, the uses for each are triggered, uh, the uses for each of these triggered components are move data between components. So for example, dependent dropdowns, manipulate existing data, such as validations and calculations, and then load additional data into the form from, a data, from database lookups, or API calls to other systems. Let's take a look at visibility steps. Visibility steps are used to dynamically hide or show components on a form. They can also dynamically enable or disable components. Validation steps can be used in the following ways. They can allow more customization than the default required optional form validations, and they can and they can be used either through a rule or a flow to configure validations. Outcome rules allow users to utilize rules in a flow to automatically close a form. They can also allow different paths in a workflow to exist. All right, let's work on an example of utilizing an active form flow uh, within our example form here that we created earlier. Let's go ahead and jump into our editing our form. We already have the necessary fields and what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask that a name is provided before the end user is able to hit submit. And to do that, we're going to go to our right here, the properties. We're going to go under form rules, active form flows. We select add. We're going to give it a name. We're going to go into edit rule flow. And from here, it's going to drop us into our flow designer. What we want to select is we want to go down to our folder tree in our steps, go under form rules, and we're going to drag out enable control and disable control. But before we use these controls, we actually need to use a rule to evaluate if the name has been provided or not. We're going to pull our run rule step, connect that here. Let's go ahead and create our rule. We create a new rule. We're going to use a form rule. We're going to give it a name. We're going to bring in uh, the name field from our form. Go ahead and save it. jump back onto our rule, and now we have our name as an input. 
we're going to go ahead and create our rule. We're going to say if the name field is empty, go ahead and return true. Otherwise, it's false. You can go ahead and save it. And now we have our two paths here. And from here, we're going to go ahead and drag true over to disable control because if the name box is empty, it's going to disable it. And if it's actually, if there's something inside that text box, go ahead and enable it. We're going to connect our points to our end step here. Now we're going to define our inputs, form data, name text box. We go ahead to enable control, form data, submit button. Same thing for our disable control. Going to select done. Let's go ahead and save this and test it out. Make sure it does what we intend for it to do. Let's go ahead and save. From here, we need to make sure that we select run at startup. We need to go to our name text box. We select value changed. Hit OK. Let's save once again. And let's go ahead and debug our form here to make sure that it works as we intended to. And here it looks like it's not. So our submit button is enabled. If we type in a name, it's not working as, as required. So let's jump back out and go see what we did wrong. That's always half the fun figuring out and troubleshooting, right? We go to properties, edit rule flow. Let's make sure we indicate value over text box. Take another look at our, another look at our rule here. So if the name is empty, it will return true. If the name is false, uh, is, is not empty, it will return false. Okay. Go ahead and save it. Take a look at our enable control. Submit button, submit button as well. Go ahead and save. Take a look at our triggers here. Make sure that it is running at startup, which it is. Hit OK. Save it again. Let's debug it again and see if it's working this time around. So we see that it is in fact disabled for us right now. If we go and type in our name, we can see it become enabled. Perfect. So once again, if we go ahead and erase the name, we can see that the submit button is not enabled for us. And it's going to request the end user to actually enter a name before it allows us to continue forward with the form. Perfect. And that's an example of utilizing an active form flow within the form.